What's up, buddy? Hey, how are you? Well, where did all these come from? I do not know. Yeah, I forgot. Sure. Yeah. Oh. Michael left me on vacation. I, I forgot the name. Yeah, he's um, his wife. You know, a little mini vacation. <laughs> He doesn't get to go on to use the so I need a vacation. I probably won't get one until I'm dead. <laughs> and then it'll be a permanent one. to know the difference. 
We are in a time when gross darkness is falling upon us, and we have got to know. We have to find the true believers, and that's one of the most interesting things of this conversation I had with this man. He said, you know, he works, he's met with, he's met the Pope, he's at the Pope's house three times, I'm like, Catholics? He said, there are true converts in every church, Absolutely. in every religion. Yes. And he said, if we don't have the maturity to be able to find each other yes. and give up on all that junk that separates us and find the one thing that we have in common, then the church will never be the powerful bride that it's called and intended to be. Amen. So I just encourage you to learn from my mistakes. <laughs> 11 years, I could have been in fellowship with this person. And I mean, it just it breaks my heart. But I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful that the Lord made a way, yes. made a way past my judgment. I don't even remember why I had that thought. I didn't even know why I didn't like it. I couldn't even tell you why. 11 years ago, I made a judgment. I stayed away from my ever since. So I'm telling you, test the fruits. Don't look at a person and judge them. We never know. We absolutely never know. And please, let's let's promise to use discernment and love with each other yes. in all things in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we had a great conversation yesterday, but I thought it was unique. You know, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the scripture says a matter is established. Well, I was sitting on the deck the other day. I was really wasn't doing anything. I was just sitting there watching birds flying around and thinking about the stuff that I had to do. And the Lord spoke to me. And I was, I had some negative, I call it negative vibes. I was having some negative thoughts about some stuff. And the Lord spoke to me as clearly as I think I've ever heard it. <clears throat> and I know it was the Lord because I would have never have said this to myself. Yeah. <laughs> he said, grow up. Yeah. Exactly what he said. And that was all I said. And at first I thought, grow up. I mean, come on. I'm about to grow out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I realized the more I thought about it and meditated on that, it's no different than the maturing. Yeah. You know, Knowing something is one thing, and living it is really, is really revelation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we have way more information sure. than we actually walk in, than That's we really true. live in. Yeah. And so what God is trying to do with all of us is to raise us up mm -hmm. to a place of maturity, to where it's not about us anymore, right. to where it's <coughs> about Him. Mm -hmm. You know, we say it's about Him, but then we get upset when something happens yeah. it's about us. You know? mm -hmm. The problem is our, our, our focus has just shifted from him to me. And that's a, a sure sign of immaturity is when everything is about you. Yeah, that's right. Or anything, you know, when it comes to, you know, you feel sorry for yourself. You can be legitimately wrong. Right. You know, it isn't that you're not being maybe messed with. It's just that the moment that focus comes to yourself, Everything escalates, everything magnifies, everything becomes more weird and bad than it, than it actually is. Yeah. And you find out that the, the moment you shift your attention back to the Lord and His blessings and His goodness and His grace, the other stuff just has a tendency to fade away. Yeah. So, to me, when Suzanne was talking about the, the maturity, how the Lord was speaking to her about maturing, it was just a perfect witness for that. And we had had the conversation prior to that. I mean, I didn't know that anymore that she did what God was saying to me. But I think it's the way God does work. Mm -hmm. You know, if you find a scripture somewhere and you go, wow, I never saw that before. What you tend to find is the next scripture you find, the validation one you just read, you go, why did I see this before? I've been everywhere here, you know. And that's the thing, same thing God's doing. So I think what God's doing with this church, with the body of Christ in general, but we're talking specifically about us, is trying to grow us up. Mm -hmm. Grow us up to a place where we trust totally in Him. Well, we're not trying to manipulate scripture to, to to our advantage, but to where we just point back to him and trust in his grace and his goodness. Yeah. Yeah. When we when we look at every situation through the lens of God's character, through his love and his grace, it changes our perspective. And it's so easy as humans to forget, to look through the eyes of grace and look through the eyes of love. In those moments when the world does let us remind us that we're still human, it's yeah. even more. <laughs> Anyone else? Prayer requests or yeah, uh, prayer for Mike and Cindy. They're out camping, so that that's time of 
fellowshipping, connecting with the Lord, and time of revelation, and for Him to rest for, you know, from everything he, he does here and at home and all that, so that He can have that time to relax. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I also uh, wanted to praise God and, and, and be thankful for how faithful He is and all and the, and the ways that He's blessed us to. There's new things happening in the Ocasio household. Uh, we finally got a piece of land that we were able to buy our offer was accepted, so we're moving to the country. Praise the Lord. Uh, Praise the Lord. So we're going to build a house and have our own little farm and try and grow as much of our food as we can and, you know, just sit there and with a piece of hay and yeah. enjoy the vistas. There's no coffee to, to collect, but everything else is good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen.
Yeah. Um, so anybody that has anywhere they want to post a flyer, uh, all are welcome, and there's postcards to hand out or mail in the back. All right, let's uh, take an offering this morning. Um, Toby and Ron, would you two like to come take an offering this morning?
All right, James, can you count say?
Are you free? I can hear you. Are you free?
I really appreciate it. They both did a fantastic job. There's nothing new. Amen. We really appreciate them standing in and just being obedient to the Lord in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. Sunday school kids could be dismissed, and young people. So, uh, a couple of weeks, and <clears throat> we didn't do a thing. Well, I mean, we were doing something all the time, but we didn't really go anywhere. We had a granddaughter's uh, wedding shower. We don't know, because we have like short-term memory loss. Uh, we were doing something, but I'm sure it'll all come back to me one day, praise the Lord. <clears throat> but anyway, we had a good time, and just while I worked and gardening and sitting on the deck feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> I really wasn't feeling sorry for myself. I was just kind of upset. You know how you, well, you probably don't, but I know how I obsess about things. I have, you know, this deal. Once something gets on my head, I just, you know, I just wear it out. And uh, it's not healthy for me. But... Thank God, it's just the mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, it's just the mind. How many of you have ever had a <clears throat> dream from the Lord? Mm -hmm. A vision? Mm -hmm. Just a real strong unction? Yes. Maybe even just a really, really strong desire. Mm -hmm. Not for something sinful or bad or negative, but just something, you know, would really be a good thing, be a positive thing. <clears throat> and you can't necessarily say, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that God spoke directly to you, but you just feel like it's the sure, Lord, sure. you know, kind of urging you and, and encouraging you to do things. Well, that, that's kind of what I want to talk about a little bit. I, in fact, I was, when I talked to Susan, or Suzanne just briefly yesterday, um, I told her, I, I was telling her what I thought, I might preach. I wasn't telling what I was going to preach, but just kind of the, uh, the focus of it. And the fact of it is, uh, it ends up being two messages because even though it all made sense to me, I was sure that it wouldn't make sense to anybody else in the context in which I was trying to express it. So I just started over and decided that it would just be two different messages. Praise the Lord. Instead of dumping a whole bunch of stuff that would just not fit together. For me, it fits perfectly, but as I said, this, you know, I have this mind thing that malfunctions every once in a while. Praise the Lord. But all Scripture, you know, God is trying to speak to us all the time. And you know, when the Scripture talks about uh, he, His new covenant, He no longer uh, demands us to be perfectly obedient to the Word of God because He said, I placed it now in your heart, right. in your mind. And uh, what that really means is the principles are there. It doesn't mean that He automatically downloaded the King James Version of the Bible into you and so now you have total recall of all Scriptures. And it's, That's not the case. What is the case is you know sure. right from wrong. Sure. You know what God's trying to get you to do in, in some sense or another because... Uh, He's in us. Yes. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the Word of God. Amen. He is the Word, right? Made flesh. He dwells in us. So there's this kind of a knowing thing that sometimes even when you share it with other people and you don't have a scripture, you know, you're not saying, well, you know, uh, James 1.23 says, but you'll just say something and then recognize that it is biblical. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It may not be verbatim, but it's the principle that God's placed in you that you're trying to share with somebody else instinctively by the Spirit. And so uh, uh, without just meandering along here any further, let's go, let's just go to Romans chapter 8, verse 28 through 32. Romans 8, 28 uh, through 32. Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody again. Praise the Lord. Apparently everybody knew I was coming back because 
Mr. Mark here, how are they? <laughs> I don't take that personally, although I don't get even, how are they? <laughs> And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called, and whom he called, then he also justified, and whom he justified, then he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? I'd like to read that once more, Roberto. We just really need to get this uh, in our hearts and minds. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Now, He doesn't say all things are good. He just says they will work to your good. Yes. For them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow. And we were in Christ before the foundation of the world, and God knew who would be saved and who wouldn't be saved. He didn't determine that. He just knows the future, right? Because there's no future for Him. He's in the now all the time. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, then He also called. And whom He called, then He also justified. Whom He justified, then He also glorified. But what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, I want to approach this from a little bit different way. <clears throat> and so to do that, I want to go to Ruth, the book of Ruth, chapter 1, and we'll read verses 16 through 22. Ruth, chapter 1, verses 16 through 22. And Ruth said, now how many of you know, all know the story about Ruth? Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Ruth is a Moabite. And uh, her mother in law, Naomi, left uh, Israel, left actually Bethlehem, because there was a famine. We'll get all, into all this in a little bit, but I want you to kind of have some idea where we're going. And so Naomi and her husband left. Bethlehem and went to Moab. Mm -hmm. Moab's not a great place to go, but they thought it was going to be better than where they were, so they went. In the meantime, they had two sons, and those sons married Moabites. They intermarried with these other people. Later, the sons, the father died, and the two sons died, leaving Naomi with two daughter, uh, three daughter-in-laws. Two daughter-in-laws, anyway, and uh, and uh, nothing else. She gets the word that the famine's over. You can go back to Israel, back to Bethlehem. So she hands out to it, and the two daughter-in-laws are going to come with her. They don't have husbands anymore. They don't have anything going on. And so Naomi tries to discourage her from doing that. Tells them, no, stay with your people. You know, I'm going back to mine. Well, Ruth would not be deterred. She said, no, I'm going with you. So that's, that's where we're at. Ruth goes with Naomi. The other daughter-in-law, she says, okay, fine, I'm standing here with my people, and you can go to yours. Alright? So, this is where we're at. Ruth is, or, or Naomi's trying to get the two daughter-in-laws not to follow after her, not to go with her, but to stay where they are. And, but Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest, I will go. Yes. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God. That's the important part right there. Your God can be my God. Where you die, I'll die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Praise the Lord. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. So once she realized Ruth was not going to be talked out of this, Naomi just stopped talking. So the two went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass that when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them, and they said, Is this Naomi? 
And she said unto them, Call me not, no call me Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Mara means bitter. It's, it's another word that they used in the wilderness when they had bitter uh, herbs. Mm -hmm. That's the word they used, Mara. And I went out full. Something screwed up here with her thinking because she said she went out because there was a famine. But now she's rehearsing this experience and said, I went out full. And the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why then call you me Naomi, seeing that the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. Now here's where it gets weird, because the barley harvest happens in the month of Nisan in, in uh, Hebrew, it's N-I-S-S-A-N. That month corresponds to our uh, March and April. Mm. So it's not like March or April, it's the, the two months. Nisan is in the middle of these two months, right? Now on the 14th of Nisan, or the barley harvest, is the Passover. Jesus is crucified. The 15th to the 21st is what they call unleavened bread, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's all part of Passover, but that's what happens from the 15th to the 21st, and that represents the burial. Okay? Unleavened bread is sinless, or, you know, leaven is a type of sin. So this is unleavened bread, meaning there's no sin in him, the bread of life. That was his... That was his uh, burial. Then the 17th and the 18th is the celebration of first fruits. And first fruits is a type of or a metaphor for the resurrection. All right. So look at let's look at 2 Timothy 3:16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Instruction, not in how for you to be righteous, but how you live the reality of your righteousness. So, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Now, so, the purpose for Passover is to teach these Hebrews how to find God's favor. How to find peace, how to find power, how to find rest. How? Through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So all scripture, even though this isn't defined that way, it's not spoken that way, because we know the context, we can we can relate to it. We can understand that that's what God was really talking about in this barley harvest. Passover, uh, unleavened bread. And for his fruits. He's talking about the death, burial, and resurrection. He's been talking about it from day one, from the very beginning, from the fall of Adam. It's so a problem that we run into is when we read the Bible, we'll pick out, and this happens, we'll pick out one scripture and we'll beat that thing to death. Because we're trying to we're trying to make it fit some preconceived idea that we have. Yeah. It happens here. You preach, somebody will come and tell you, well. Now what about this? Well, how about the con in the context of the entire Bible instead of just trying to pick one scripture out and then beat me with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. What does that really mean in the whole in the whole context of the Bible? What is God really trying to say? He's not going to just say it in one place. Everything has to conform. Everything has to fit that that reality. Amen. So that's what we're talking about here. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God as profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That's why you can't just go in and pick out one Scripture and then try to build an entire doctrine around it. Right. It won't work. Right. It, 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 it'll work for religion, but it won't work for you in your relationship with God. Right. Amen? And so that's why, typically, when I preach, I'm giving lots of Scripture because I want you to see the, the total content. I don't want to think I'm... Well, look, I've got this agenda, so I've got to find something that will back me up. Mm -hmm. That's not my purpose at all. I'm using the Scripture to show you that it's, it's throughout the Bible. This concept, this idea, this reality is all throughout the Bible, not just in one particular place or in a couple of places. Amen? All right, so the purpose for Passover, as I said, was to 
to, to open the, the understanding. Remember, these people don't have the Holy Spirit. So they've got to do this all by intellect and by physical acts. Okay? That's why the feast. That's why they're doing all these things. Amen? So it's, it's God is trying to show them how to, find, how to find peace, how to find favor, how to find power, and how to find rest in God. And it's through the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? So now, I said before, Passover, when we talk about the, the, the feast of Passover, the feast of Passover actually includes unleavened bread and first fruits. It's all part of one big celebration. Amen? Starts on the 14th of Nisan, and it runs through the 18th of the following month. For us, it would be the following month. All right? Matthew, let's look at this. Uh, Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30. Now, just stay with me, because it takes a little while to kind of get things going. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Praise the Lord. So our personal relationship with Jesus is what we're talking about here. Not only how to have peace with God, but how to have the peace of God. Right. Amen. Yes. I mean, it's one thing to know that God is not angry and right. that we have peace with Him, but it's another thing for us to be able to have the peace of God, where things don't freak us out and, and disturb us and, and create all kinds of chaos and, and, and problems in our life. And it seems like, to me, the search for peace, for power, and for rest are elusive. I mean, it just doesn't happen because you want it to happen. Right. Amen? Amen. The good news is that God has provided the means for us to live yes. victorious. Yes. Through the good times yes. and through the not so good times. Yes. Through all that life has for us, through all the experiences that life has, God has given us a way. God has provided a means by which we can live, amen, victorious. Right. Praise God. Yes. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Praise the Lord. Chapter 4, verse 19. For my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. That's good news. Yes. If you believe it, praise yes. the Lord. Yes. God is. And God has been restoring these spiritual realities in us. How? Through His Word. Yes. Through the Word of God. These are realities. These are spiritual realities. <coughs> and He reveals them to us through His Word. Amen? Yes. Alright, let's go back to Ruth chapter 1 and verse 22. And let me show you. To where? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Jesus Christ is the Spirit of prophecy. This entire book is prophetic. Right. Yes. When he tells us that we should all prophesy, when Paul said, I would that you all prophesy, he's talking about this. He's not talking about necessarily predicting the future. He's talking about that we would all speak with the authority right. of the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so God is restoring all these things to us because these are the last days. These are the end times. Praise God. And he's got to have a people, amen, who are in sync with him, with yeah. the way he thinks and the way he operates. Right. Praise God. Right. So God's restoring all these things. Amen. And he's doing it through the word of God. So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. Now we have a tendency to look at this thing and the first thing we think is well it must be about Naomi because she's the, the Jewess, she's the, the Hebrew uh, woman. The other gal's an uh, outcast. I mean she's a Moabitess, right? Mm -hmm. It's all prophetic is the point. Mm -hmm. And so it talks about this, okay, the barley harvest. What's the barley harvest? It's a season. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And we're always talking about, oh, we got to see. We're in a new season. We're in a different season. Season. The, the Hebrew word for that is moed, and it just simply means appointed times. Yeah. So God is using a season, something we can relate to in the natural, that we can picture in our mind: winter, spring, 
fall, right, summer. So this is a season. But it's actually an appointed time. God had appointed this time for special things to happen. Yes. Amen. And they happen if you can receive it. Yes. For everybody, any time could be yes. the season. Yes. You see what I'm saying? It could be the appointed time because God foreordained this. He knew yes. all about this before the, the, the beginning of time, before we ever even existed. We were in Christ and so forth that we already talked about, right? Yes. So these are appointed times. Now, just like Naomi, our problem has been understanding spiritual truths. And the reason for that is because we are so much more moved and in sync with the, the tune of our physical senses or the reality of our physical senses. Yeah. Mm. Amen? Mm. God uses these physical, natural events, but He uses them for the purpose of revealing spiritual realities. Yes. Mm. Praise the Lord. They're not just nice stories that encourage us. These are spiritual realities that He's trying to get across to us into our spirit. So we're not just reading things and and intellectually absorbing it, but never getting past the brain into the spirit of us and yeah. so that we can fulfill the purpose that God has for us, so that we can move into right. the seasons, the way, the appointed times that God has for each one of us. There are people that live their entire life and never reach the appointed time. Yes. I'm not saying they're not saved. I'm not saying they didn't go to heaven. I'm saying they never, ever fulfilled the real purpose that God had for them. Because they didn't recognize the season when they were there. Or, like Naomi, they ran from the season because it looked, in the natural, it looked negative. Right. There's a yes. famine. Yeah. So we just split yeah. and went to Moab. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Focusing on the natural events instead of Jesus, the spiritual reality, is religion. Now, whatever your natural reality might be, sickness, relational, financial, spiritual, emotional, or well, maybe a combination of all those, and probably through your life you will experience something in, the, in every one of those. Yeah. Amen. But if we get that to focus, right. praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the natural events instead of the Lord, instead mm -hmm. of the spiritual reality which is not religion, but it's our relationship with the Lord. The letter kills. Yes. But the Spirit gives life. That's what Suzanne was talking about this morning. If somebody comes to you and says, well, have you, have you read this? I mean, come on. What's your problem? Mm. It may be, it, it might even be true, but it's, I can tell you this much, it's not God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is the way God works. Yeah. He loves you. Look at Jesus when he's dealing with all these sinners. He could, it would have been so easy for him to point out every single thing where they were failing. Yeah. He was the Word of God. Yeah. And all they had was the Old Covenant. But he understood the real purpose of the Old Covenant. Yes. So you don't see him berating the sinners. He's berating the religious people that are attacking the sinners. Yeah. And he's embracing the sinner. Why? Because he likes sin? No, he hates sin, but he loves the sinner. Yeah. Yes. Praise the Lord. And we have a problem just separating that. Yes. We see sin in somebody's life and we automatically see them as a sinner. Yes. God doesn't. Mm -hmm. He sees the sin separate from the sinner. Yes. It's an act, but it's not their identity. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just an action. Praise the Lord. All right. Romans 10, chapter 1 uh, through 4. Excuse me. Romans chapter 10, verse 1 through 4. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for Israel is that they might be saved. Right I bear the record, they have a zeal of God, but not according to revelation. Amen? Mm -hmm. They've got knowledge. They've got information. But they have no revelation. The, the, the information has never left the stage of information. Mm -hmm. It's never developed into mm -hmm. revelation. Praise the Lord. They being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves under the righteousness of God. The only right, true righteousness is of God. 
Amen. For Christ is the end of the law for the righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. And the end of you trying to do things to make yourself righteous. Yes. The law, Christ is the end of that. Yes. Now you, you, the only way you could be righteous was true. The only way you could have ever been righteous was was through a sacrifice. But he says Christ is the end of the law. All of those rituals, all of that effort, all of that human work, he's the end of it in terms of how you become righteous. Yes. To everyone that believes. All right? So focusing on the person is relationship. Yes. Focusing on the demand is religion. Yes. Amen. Mm. The stories that are recorded, the events in Scripture, they don't save you. No. But they're there to keep us focused on our relationship with Jesus and what He has done for us. Mm. All right. mm. You can read how many you know you know, you can read the Bible a thousand times, it's not gonna save you. Right. It's just it's just pointing you to the one who is your savior. Right. Yes. Amen. All right, let's go back to Ruth again, chapter four this time, verses five through ten. <laughs> then said Boaz. Now Boaz, for those of you who don't know the story of Ruth, Boaz is a relative of Naomi. No connection to Ruth whatsoever, because Ruth is a Moabite, so she just happened to be married to Naomi's son. Boaz is a kinsman, you know, using Bible language, a near kinsman to Naomi. So he could be a cousin, he might be an uncle, he might be a nephew. He, he's the closest living relative to her. And so Boaz said, What day thou buyest the field of, of the hand of Naomi? Now I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but it's, I don't know how else to get this straightened out. What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi? Thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. Now here's the deal. Uh, Women didn't own stuff. That's just Old Testament. That's not the will of God. That, please don't come tell me, you know, God don't. I don't know how to get past stupid sometimes. But let, let me just say it this way. There is no difference between her and me. Yes, physiologically there may be a difference, but as far as God's concerned, there is absolutely no difference. So don't come talking to me about these scriptures about women can't preach, women don't do this, uh, women can't have that, and, and, and uh, you know, submit to your husbands. Look, it's, it's mutual submission. If you've been married more than six months, you know that, or you're not going to be married for another six months. <laughs> I mean, that's just the reality. I'm not saying there isn't positions that God gives, but look, when, how, how, what did we get redeemed to? When we were redeemed, we got redeemed back to the original condition. Yes. Yes. Innocence. Yes. Not, yep. He didn't just say, well, I'm not going to deal with your sins. He said, I, your sins and your iniquities I will remember no more. Why? Because you have been redeemed to that original condition, which was innocent. It wasn't that you didn't do, that Adam and Eve didn't do some things that later on would be defined as sin. But at the time, there was no law. Therefore, they couldn't break the law. They were innocent. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. When God created Adam and Eve, He created them. He created him. Adam and Eve. Now that's not really gender. That's talking about he created man or mankind. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's mankind. Yes. It's not a man, but it's mankind. A tiger is a tiger. Yeah. Might be a female tiger, might be a male tiger, but it's just a tiger either way. Yes. That's mankind. And that's what he's talking about when he created man. He's yes. talking about mankind. He's not talking about a sexual yes. gender right. or specific. He said he created man and in man was male, female. Yes. Well, God, why? Because he was created in the image of God. 
God is not male or female. Yeah. At times he's defined, he's referred to as our Heavenly Father, we understand yeah. that, but he's also referred to as uh, other names we've got, we, we've taught on all that before. The, the, the many-breasted one. Yeah. Talking about a woman who nurtures and, and, and raises up children. Yeah. Sustains them, so on and so forth. Yeah. So that's just, that's just another picture of that. So here's what, we're, what I'm saying is, Adam, Adam and Eve were one. There was no gender. Eve came out of Adam. She wasn't less than Adam. She was equal. She came out of Adam. They were one. So he didn't try to take the, the worst parts of Adam and make a woman. He just took the woman out of Adam. And they are equal. He calls her a help me. If you look that word up, that actually means protector. Hallelujah. Oh, husband, you need to look over your shoulder yeah. and not see if she's watching, but see if she's protected. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. She's, a, she, she's also a protector, a protection for you. Why? Because, well, I don't know about all men. I just know I get some really stupid ideas sometimes. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes I need a little balance. Something that would anchor me a little bit. Because I have these... Tendencies to kind of be spontaneous, I like to call it. <laughs> but I'm just saying. So, when you come talking about uh, women are, are uh, subservient somehow, or don't have the same rights as a man, you're you're just not reading the Bible, or you're not understanding the Bible because they are we are equals. We come from the same source. Yes, Just because we're physiologically different doesn't make us different. Right. It doesn't give one more power or authority over the other. Yeah. That's yeah. culture, church. That's culture. That is not relationship with God. That's right. So you can you know you can dig through the scripture until you find something that will validate your position yeah. and then try to beat everybody up with it. And the fact is you're just showing your ignorance. Just showing your lack of understanding. Because look, you look at the whole picture. Look at the whole Bible. Yes. How does God deal with men and women? Exactly the same. Yes. Amen. There's prophetesses. There's yes. there's uh, uh, judges. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. There in, in, in the New Testament as well. Yes. I think it was Stephen or Philip's daughters. They prophesied. Aquila and Priscilla. They were preachers. Yes. Yes. So you've got to look at the whole thing. You can't just come pick out one scripture and then say, "Okay, you know, you're breaking the law because you're doing something that I don't think you ought to be doing." Yeah. Well, tell that to all the people that have been saved under female ministers. Right. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Tell that to somebody who's been healed. Under the ministry yeah. of a right. same spirit. Hmm. Same spirit. Amen. Yes. In the scripture where God says, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands, it says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. You know what that means? If she doesn't submit, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. yeah. It might make a difference for her, but it doesn't make a difference to God. Mm -hmm. Because he's not judging her by you or you by her. That's right. Mm -hmm. We've already been judged. So he's telling us how to be one. Yes. Hmm. yes. Physiologically, or, you know, out here in, the, right. in, in this world that we live in, as well as what we are spiritually speaking. Yes. Amen. Well, that was just a rant because <laughs> I needed to, praise the Lord. <laughs> anyway, Boaz is a near kinsman. Ruth lost everything. Her husband's dead, her sons are dead. She's a female. Everything that belonged to her is gone. Mm -hmm. So Boaz, a male in that same family, can redeem this stuff back for Ruth. Because he's an male. Mm -hmm. This is the culture. All right. So what day thou buyest the field of the hand, hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, because she was married to the son of the man that owned the property. He died, now the sons would have it, okay? So now they're gone, and now if you're going to buy this property, all this good property out here, you've got to take 
the wife that goes along with it. The wife of the man, you know, the owner of the So the wife of the dead. To raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I can't redeem it for myself lest I, mar lest I mar my own inheritance. I can't take this unless I screw up mine. In other words, then if she has any descendants, they'll get the inheritance. And I've got kids already, and I don't want to screw up their inheritance by hooking up with her. All right? So the kids have said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem now my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. So he says, this was the guy closest in, kid, in, in relationship. So he says to Boaz, the next closest kinsman, he says, you buy it because if I buy it, it'll mess up the inheritance for my own kids. You don't have any kids. You're not married. You buy it and take it. All right? Praise the Lord. Now this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing for to confirm all things a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor and this was a testimony in Israel. So if you're making an agreement with somebody in front of everybody else, you take a shoe off, throw it down and that's saying that this thing is a deal. We've made a deal, right? So, therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, Ye are witnesses this day that I have brought all that was Elimelech's, which was Naomi's husband, and all that was Chilion's, which was her son, and Malion's, who was the other son, of the hand of Naomi. He bought it all. Moreover, Ruth and Moabitess, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among the brethren, and from the gate of his place, you are witnesses this day. Now try to keep that in mind, all that verbiage there that we're talking about, all this legal stuff that's happening. God's Word is seed to produce your harvest. Hmm. Hmm. It's, it's, the Word of God is there to move you from a place, from a reality, we'll call it, to another place. To another reality, which is your destiny, mm -hmm. <coughs> your place, your true place is a God reality. Yes. It's supernatural. It is your destiny. Yes. Amen. Man, I wish I had a better brain to make sense out of this. But Ruth had a destiny. Yes. yes. Oh yes, she did. Yes. She was in Christ. Yes. Before the foundation, yes. before Christ ever existed, yes. before there was this whole plan had even played out, she was already in Christ. Yes. Why? Because God knew that she would make yes. the Hebrew God her God. Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. Praise the Lord. And He's setting up something there, and it's something we all need to understand. Praise the Lord. Yes. A Amen. We we are we go through seasons. We are in places, but. We have a divine place. We have a God place. And that's where God is trying to get us to. That's what everything about your life, regardless of what, how it's worked out secularly, everything about your life has been to get you to the, to the destiny that God has for you before the foundation of the world. Praise the Lord. We think it's about jobs and this and that and the other. And the truth is, God, he, the, that's all secondary stuff because He has a destiny for you. And in that destiny, you won't be thinking about a job. You won't be thinking about this payment, that payment, because God has everything aligned and perfectly set up for you to have everything that He created for you before the foundation of the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, it's called righteousness. Yeah. Right standing with God. Yes. Heirs. Joint heirs. Yes. Amen. Amen. Your reality in Christ is what we're talking yes. about. Yes. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. I'm just going to give you a few scriptures here for validating this reality here. Praise the Lord. Uh, Romans 1, 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just or the justified or the righteous will live by faith. Mm -hmm. Alright, Romans chapter 3, uh, verses 3 and 4. For what if some did not believe? 
Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? So you're believing for something. God's, you found a promise. You've claimed it. You're believing for it. And your sister-in-law says you're an idiot. Right? You're believing for a financial... You, you, you've got the same job. Same education. Same job market. Mm -hmm. And you're saying God is going to pour out a blessing that I can't contain. He's going to do exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or think. Yes. He's going to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that I can't contain. He has a financial breakthrough yes. for me. If I can believe. Right. And they say, you're an idiot. You need to get a second job. That's what you need. <laughs> you need to take out a loan. You need to get another credit card. You need to do something if you think you're going to have X amount of dollars without some means of getting it. Just one example. But what if some didn't believe? If her, does, does that sister-in-law's up? I'm just picking a thing here. I don't have any issues with my sister-in-law's, but I'm just saying. Does their unbelief change anything about God? No, it doesn't. Does the biggest heathen and demonic uh, mind change anything about God? No matter what they say, no matter how they say it, does it change anything about God? No. No. The faith of God, unbelief, make the faith of God ineffective? Will their unbelief affect my belief in the effectiveness of God? Not only if I let it. God forbid. Amen. Yes, let God be true. Yes. And let every man a liar. Yes. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. All right, chapter 10, verse 17. It's just right here. What I have seen, what I have experienced, what I've read about somebody else's experience, what they told me about their experience. That's not vision. That's not. That's not imagination. That's just memory. Sure, yeah. It's just intellect. Amen. You've been redeemed. Praise the Lord. And so now you walk by faith, yeah. or you should, if you want the benefits of that redemption. Right. Otherwise, you've got to die to get the benefit. You got to, all you're getting is going to hell. Yeah. All right. Back to Ruth chapter two. Verses 1 and 2. I know this is convoluted, but that's why I can't imagine what it might have been like if I left that other stuff in there. That was another message. Anyway, well, I've been gone for a couple of weeks. So. Mm. Naomi had kinsmen of her husbands, a mighty man of wealth. This is the Boaz I talked about already. Of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn. Now remember, this is the barley harvest. I, don't mistake that corn. It's not corn out here. It's the barley harvest is what they're talking about. And now let me go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. Now look at this. This is, this is Ruth who says, I can go there and beg for barley. Yeah. The... the, the, the the, uh, the system was set up this way. If you had uh, fields and you had property, when you, when you reaped your crop, when you reaped the barley harvest, you would allow the widows and the poor to follow your gleaners or those that are reaping the harvest and pick up the little bits that were dropped accidentally. You know, if you've ever been through a cornfield left, the corn's been picked, there's always some corn laying around. They were allowed, that was their right, was to go along the outer edges of that and pick up what was left behind, what was dropped accidentally. She says, let me go there, and I'll, she said, I'm, I'll find grace in his eyes. This is a Moabitess. She's not a Hebrew. She doesn't have the culture, the tradition, or anything else. But she says, let me go there and beg, and I think I'll get favor from him. And so, Naomi says, go. Now here's the deal. Ruth was in a place of begging. That was her reality. That was the place that she was in. But here's what's so amazing. Here's what is so Jesus. 
the same place that she's going to meet and marry the man who owns all of them. Wow. She's there begging in a place mm. that in her mind, she's going to own. Mm. It's going to be hers. Oh. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm. What if she's never been a beggar? Yeah. What if she's never come to that season, the barley harvest? What if she never came to her appointed time? Uh, her moed, her place that God had designated to be where the blessing was, where the favor was, where the peace was, where the rest was. Oh, hell. I'm telling you. Ruth chapter 2, verse 2. I will show you how God works, is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to labor to make some sense, praise the Lord. Ruth chapter 2, verse 2. Hallelujah. Yes, right there. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field, glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. Man, she's speaking positive here. In whose sight I'm going to find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. Yeah. Praise the Lord. She's broke. Yeah. <laughs> but she never thought she was supposed to be broke. She's broke, she's broke, but she's not buying the fact that I'm supposed to be broke. She's broke, but she's believing this, this I'm in this place, but this isn't the place I'm supposed right. This isn't my place. Yes. Amen. Right. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Proverbs 23 7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, yes. so is it. Yep. She didn't see herself as a beggar. She didn't see herself as destitute and cut off. She saw herself as someone who's going to be favored. Yes. Yes. As someone who's going to be blessed. Yes. Mm. See, thinking, yes. imagination yes. is supposed to take you to the place of blessing. Yes. That's why it gives us the word so we have something to meditate on, something yes. to imagine, yes. something to think about yes. so that we can get what it is He put in here for us Amen. That he preordained for you to have an appointed time somewhere you can believe it. Amen. There is a reality that God wants to release in you. Thank you. Hallelujah. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You might be begging bread, but you're not supposed to be begging bread. You just happen to be at the moment. And you won't stay there if you can imagine, amen, what God really has for you. True of anything that is promised in the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you're in lack, it's not your place. It's just a place. Your reaction should be to know this ain't my place. This isn't my place. It's a place, but it's not mine. I'm just. Going through, praise yes, the Lord. Right. I'm just here for the moment, praise yes, God. Right. Yeah. You may experience, but you're not supposed to. Yes. Praise yes. God. Mm. Ruth 1-1. One, one. Mm. Now I came to I think about, this is, I, I'm still talking about Ruth. Ruth is out here in Moab land. No link to God. No connection to God. No hope for God. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, this dysfunctional family from Bethlehem shows up. Yeah. It came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. Mm -hmm. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the land of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. Wow. They left Bethlehem because of a famine. Bethlehem is called the house of bread. That's the def that's the definition of the word Bethlehem yes. is house. Beth is house. Lachem is bread. Yes. Yes. They were in the house of bread. Yes. And they left Jesus. for better territory. Yes. I mean, go figure. It's just crazy, but that's exactly what happened. Why? Because they, all they could see was what was natural. Right. 
Amen. Looked like a famine. Smelt like a famine. Yeah. Felt like a famine. Yeah. Must be a famine. Yeah. Let's go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Great God. Wow. Moab. Do you know what Moab is? Moab is the place that's named after the illegitimate, by actually the incestuous son of Lot. Lot, daughters, you know, if you read the story, they entice him. I don't know what was going on there, but supposedly he got drunk and had sex yeah. with his daughters and they gave birth, right? This is after they were taken out of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. His wife turns to a pillar of salt. He's stuck in a rock somewhere, hiding in a cave with his two daughters, thinking the entire world has been destroyed. Yeah. And all they knew was what they could see and all that was gone. Right. And so they want to have children. They want to have repopulate. Yeah. So they have sex with their own father. And this incestuous offspring, and one of them, is Moab. And that land is then called Moab. And Moab, metaphorically, is a type of what men can do. In other words, why, how did Lot get there in the first place? Abram said, look, I don't want there to be strife no. between your herdsmen and our herdsmen. So he said, you pick what you want. Yeah. North, south, east, or whichever way you want to go, it's yours. And I'll go the other way. Yeah. And it says, Lot looked on the well-watered plains yeah. of Sodom. And he fixed, fixed his tent towards Sodom. Uh, In other words, he saw through the natural, yeah. that's a good place to raise sheep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Because it's it's well watered. There's plenty of grass, good climate. What man can do? He wasn't thinking about what God could provide. Abram went off into the desert and God gave him you know, this huge uh, blessing of finances and cattle and man servants and nature and all this kind of stuff. Why? Because he, he was looking to God. Lot was looking to what man could produce. Amen? So, Moab is a type of what man can produce. Yeah. <clears throat> so they go from what God, the house of bread, they go out into laboring for themselves. It's, it's, a, it's a picture of, of the fall. Yes. Adam and Eve, everything was there. They didn't have to do anything, right? Yeah. Until they stopped trusting God and started trusting in themselves and then God said, okay, now by the sweat of your brow, you're going to have to go out here and work for this stuff. Right. That was all provided for you, Heather. Right. Mm -hmm. sure Praise the Lord. <clears throat> See, every season isn't a place that you come to. It's a place you're supposed to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Every experience isn't something that you're you're supposed to come to and then live in that experience. Mm -hmm. The experience is there for you to just go through by faith. To trust God. Yes. Yes. Alright, Ruth chapter 1, verse 6 now. Stay with me, pray for the Lord. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people, giving them bread. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jesus said, healing is the children's bread. Mm. Praise the Lord. Naomi's bitter. Ruth is husbandless. No visible means of support. She's broken hearted. She has no future. Looks like things are just spiraling from worse to worse. That the Lord is saying, I have healing for you. We're not just talking about physical, we're talking about emotional, spiritual. Amen? Yes. There's healing for you. Yes. And it comes through Naomi, your connection. 
God. See, if you imagine according to the Word of God, all things are possible. Yes. Yes. Nothing shall be impossible. That's right. All right, Ruth chapter 3. Go to 16 and 17 there. It's still in verse 1. Praise the Lord. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you, or to return from following after me. For whether thou goest, I'll go. Whether thou lodgest, I'll lodge. My people be your people. My, your God's going to be my God. Yep. Don't make me leave. All right. Let me go with you. All right. I got a feeling. I don't have much Bible. I don't have a whole lot of theology. Yes. But I got a feeling. Yes. Something's telling me if I can go yes. where you're going, if I can get to this God, things will change. Yes. Things will be different. Yes. I don't know how. I don't know why. I just feel it. Yes. Praise Amen. the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. All right, go to Ruth chapter three. Chapter two, or excuse me, chapter three, verses two through four. And now is not Boaz of our kindred, with whose maidens thou wast? She was out gleaning with his servants. Behold, he went with barley tonight in the threshing floor. Now that harvest has been taken in, and so piled up and. Tonight they're separating the chaff from the wheat or the husk from the barley. Throwing it up in the air, you know, and it blows off, and they do it in the evening because that's when the breeze has come. So she Naomi's telling her, she said that tonight they're going to winnow this, this all this harvest that's come in. Wash yourself, therefore, and anoint yourself, and put on your good clothes. So take a bath, put on some perfume, put on your best clothes. And get down to that floor where the windowing is, but don't make yourself known to this guy until he has done feasting and drinking. So, look at, um, go on to chapter or verse 4. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt make or mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. Okay, so go in, uncover his feet, and lay down there, and then he'll tell you, get out of here, or let's spend the night together. <laughs> Something like that. I don't want to say anyhow. I'm taking it. I'll receive, I'll receive it. Okay. Yes. Verse 9. Yes. And he said to this is Boaz now speaking to Ruth, Who are you? And she answered, I'm Ruth, thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. Praise the Lord. Now let me just give you a couple of things. Ruth said, Go ahead and lay down. Remember. Or, or they always said, go and lay down and speak. Remember, this is all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. He's trying to show us something here about redemption. That's why this is the barley harvest. Yep. Passover. Death, burial, crucifixion. Huh? Right. Crucifixion, death, burial, resurrection. Right. That's what's being represented here. So she says, go in there. Lay down. Who are you? I'm Ruth. Spread therefore your spirit over my over your hand, made over myself. For thou art a near kinsman. Now a moment ago she said, go in and lay down his feet. What is that? And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That represented, his feet are representing the gospel or the good news of God. You have a redeemer. Yes. You have been redeemed. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but this stuff is all through the Bible. And we're nitpicking about those things when the same story is being told from Genesis all the way through Revelation. If you can believe yes. that you are redeemed, Jesus. all things are possible. The field you're fading in belongs to you. Hallelujah. God has given it to you yes. by the gospel. Yes. The good news. And if you accept it, he'll throw his skirt over you. Yes. You'll find shelter underneath the arms of the Lord, underneath the wings, underneath the skirt, yes. hallelujah, of God. Shelter from the enemy. Yes. 
Yes. Praise God. I mean, to me, the audacity of a beggar who in her own mind, in her own imagination, in her own thinking, owns the thing she's begging in. Yes. Mm. Praise God. I mean, it looks like another beggar. She's not thinking that way. She's not imagining that way. She's thinking, this stuff belongs to me. This is all mine. Yes. I may be begging today, but this all belongs to me. Hallelujah. And this world may have dealt you a crappy hand. Yes. And you may be dealing with some stuff in your life. And there may be some negative. But I think, I'm telling you, you need to look up. Your redemption draws up. You yes. need to be saying, I may, it may look like I'm begging, but buddy, I'm telling you, yes. I got the deed, I got the title deed yes. to this place. Oh, yes. Yes. The beat shall inherit the earth. Yes. Yes. Praise God. And it's time we started thinking in terms of the Word of God, the entire Word of God, and start imagining, start thinking, yes. instead of memorizing yes. and being stuck in what has been yes. and what the enemy tries to tell us will be. Yes. Now she's not there yet. Not, not in the natural. But she says, let me go where he is. Mm. Praise the Lord. She's in a mess. But she said, if I can get to Jesus, yes. I'll find favor. Yes. I'll find grace. I may be begging, but if I can just get to him, and if he sees me, he'll bless me. Yes. He can't help himself. Right. Imagination wow. will lead you to determined, determined pursuit. Yes. I'm going to have my stuff. Yes. That's right. I'm going to get back with the devil's stuff. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. When he yes. stole through Adam, I, I yes. got coming yes. to Jesus Christ. Yes. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to. I may be may have been begging. I'm through begging, hallelujah. Yes. I'm gonna start going. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'm gonna have so much I'm gonna be the one that's yes. that's, that's yes. handing out handfuls, hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. From the fields that I'm reaping in. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. I'll have access so that others yes. can be blessed. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. If you pursue nothing, it's because you see nothing. Yes, right. yes, that's right. Praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. I'm trying to show you how God operates. Praise the Lord. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. The things which are seen, they're temporary. They're subject to change. Like begging. But the things which are not seen, they don't change. Right. They're eternal. Mm -hmm. That's your inheritance. That's, That's your identity. Right. That's who you are in Christ. Yes. That, that will not change. Yes. It cannot change. Yes. But the messes, the circumstances, they change. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Yes. The woman, how about, think about it. It's, all, it's everywhere in the Bible is what I'm trying to say. It's in the, the woman with the issue of blood. She had spent all that she had and was none better, the Scripture says. Spent every dime she had. Mm -hmm. And she was as sick and messed up as she was before she ever went to the doctor. Right. And she said, imagine. She's just thinking, if I could just touch uh -huh. the hem of that garment, the skirt. Jesus, glory. If I could just get to that skirt that Ruth said, you know, if he throws that over you, you're in, baby. Yep. And that's what she's saying. If I can just touch the hem of that skirt. I'll be made whole. Mm -hmm. The thing I've been struggling with, the thing I've been fighting, the thing that I've been begging and pleading for, mm -hmm. it'll just be mine. Mm -hmm. That's in her imagination. She's saying, look, the whole thing is playing out while she's broken bleeding. She's seeing it. Yep. Healing, wholeness, oh, yeah. deliverance. Yeah. She's seeing all this while she is flat broke yep. and still bleeding. Yep. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yep. Imagine. Right. Mm -hmm. If thou canst believe. Yes. 
If you can imagine it, according to this word, you can have it. Back to Ruth chapter 1, verse 20. Don't call me Naomi. I'm busted. Call me Mark. Yeah. I've, my husband's dead. Kids and boys are dead. Lost everything. I went out full. That isn't what she said when she went out. No. Right. When she went out, she said, there's a famine. Yeah. Now she's saying, I went out full. Everything was great until God started messing with me. Huh. Wow. That's religion, folks. It is. When bad stuff happens, it ain't coming from God. It's either a poor choice that you've made or unbelief. Yes. Yes. Right. Praise exactly the Lord. Right. She said, call me not Naomi. Call me Mara. The Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. The Almighty had done nothing except try to reach out to her. Yes. I went out full. No, you didn't. You said you didn't. And the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why did they call me Naomi? Seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me. Now here's a case where the heathen actually has more faith sure. than the Hebrew. Yeah. She's thinking, if I could get over, something That's good could right. happen. You know, nothing good happening here. Right. I, if I could just get to, to the That's house right. of bread, if I could just get back to where, where God is, right. there's a chance. Yeah. So if you talk about what you're going through, that's your reality. Yes. That's right. You need a vision. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'm not. I'm not saying we don't go through stuff. I'm saying if you're if you're if you're obsessed with what you're going through, that's your reality. Yeah. Yeah. That's your place. That's all right. You need a vision. Yep. You need to see. Pass that to something better. Amen? Because yeah. the Bible says without a vision, the people perish. Yes. Vision is a must. Yes. Vision is making the Word of God your reality. That's what vision is. Yes. Vision is simply looking at the Word of God and saying, that's the truth. Yes. This is not. Right. This is a temporary condition, but it's not right. my reality. Right. Amen. Wow. Amen. It's not my place. I'm here, but this ain't my place. Right. I'm just coming through this place on the way to my place. Right. On the way to God's place. On the way to my yes. God reality. That's right. My destiny. Right. Praise the Lord. Here's God's method. Moses is born a slave. He's born a slave, but he's also born under a death sentence. They, they get him. They find him. He's dead. Yeah. So what does God do? God puts him in the palace. Yeah. God shows him how kings live. He's a Hebrew by birth. He's an Egyptian by culture. And he doesn't know what he is. Amen. We are born from above. We are children of the King. God's children by birth. Yes. Human by culture. Yeah. And most of us don't know who or what we are. Mm -hmm. Moses learned how nations are governed. He learned how kings function. How kings live. Yes. How? Mm. Yeah. God led his parents to do something unusual so that he could see a different reality than what they saw. Mm. He could see how kings live. Right. He could see what power is like. Yeah. Yes. He could see what it's like to just rest. Yes. No problems. I'm in the palace. Right. Somebody's taking care of me. Amen? Yes. Romans 8 chapter 6 or excuse me, Romans 8 verse 6, 6 through 17. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. 
But if you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, right? And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead will also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you'll die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you will live. In other words, don't let the sense realm dominate you. You'll have life. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Praise the Lord. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Suffering is the faith, is the belief. Yes. In spite of the circumstance. Yes. Everybody thinks God's enemy is the devil. And a hush fell over the room. But let me tell you something. God's not fighting the devil today. this. He's fighting your mind. Yes. The devil's defeated. Yes. It's our mind that needs to be renewed. That's where the battle is. Right. Praise the Lord. Right. As you think you are. Yes. See, God's showing you some things. Yes. He's putting some desires in your heart. Yes. Some hungers. Yes. Some longings. Yes. Some dreams. Yes. Some visions. Why? Because that's the you He wants you to get to. Mm -hmm. That's your reality. That's your place. Uh -huh. That's your destiny. Mm -hmm. Yes. Matthew 6, 33. Dream big. I mean, you ought to be dreaming big. You ought to have dreams that people laugh at. Yeah. Yeah. Dreams you almost are afraid to share because you know they're going to think you are out of your flipping mind. Yes. 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 Right. Praise the Lord. Yes. God operates on a large scale. Yes. Yes. He's not doling out a little here and a little there. He has to give us super abundance. Amen. That we can't even contain. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Matthew 7, 7. Ask. It'll be given. Seek. You'll find. Not and it'll be open. See, your mind, your natural mind, fights God's vision. It fights God's plan for you. It fights God's destiny for you. That's why you've got to renew your mind to the Word of God. You've got to believe this. Yes. Because your natural humanity is fighting against it all the time. Yes, it is. It's seeing famine yep. in the house of bread. Right. It's running off to what you can do right. yeah. because you don't trust what God has promised He would do. Right. And you end up yeah. in death. Spiritually, yeah. I'm talking about. Just where nothing's happening. Right. Amen. Where nothing's blossoming. Where nothing's growing. Where nothing's right. producing. That's right. You are blessed. You are healed. Yes. You're not going to be. You are. If yes. you just get to the place. Yes. Find the season. Find the moment. Find the place in God. Yeah. And it's called faith. Yes, Lord. Yes. You're prospered. You're empowered. Yes. This is how God does it. He puts it in you. Yes, yes. Like He put His Word in your heart yes. and in your mind and in your mouth. Yes. And no, it's not the King James verbatim, but it's a hunger. It's a desire. Yes. It's a knowing that there's yes. something better. This yes. isn't what I'm here for. This isn't the, all that there is. God's got something better for me. Yes. Why? Because the promises of God are in me that are declared. Yes. Oh, I'm blessed. I'm a king. Amen. I'm an heir. I'm a joint heir. Yes. I'm above and not beneath. The head and not the tail. Hallelujah. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. Yes. It's in us. Yes. 
Yes, it is. Yes, Lord. Joseph had a dream. Yes. The dream came from God. It wasn't just something he made up. It was a dream from God. And he said, hey, we were all out in the field. Yep. I don't know if it was a barley harvest, but they were out in the field. Yeah. Death, burial, resurrection. Planting. Mm -hmm. Sowing. Reaping. Uh -huh. And he said, we were binding up the sheaves in the harvest. And all of yours, dad, mom, brothers, all bowed down to mine. Mm -hmm. Ooh, did that make a who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. That even your father's going to bow down to you? Praise God. God put something in his heart. There's something I want to do for you. There's a reality that I have for you that you've got to pursue. You've got to be willing to believe it. You've got to be willing to go and do whatever needs to be done. You've got to be willing to go through whatever season you might find yourself in. God gave the vision. And we know the story. He ends up in the palace. Second only to Pharaoh. Yeah. And everybody's about. Mm -hmm. He's become the source for life. For everybody. He's a type of Christ. Yes. Redeems them from the famine. Yes. Becomes their source. Their protector. Their provision. David. This is how God works. I'm telling you. Yes. David is a shepherd boy. He's out herding sheep. He's a nothing. He's a nobody. Even in his own family, they mock him. He's just that stupid kid. He's a, he's a you know he's kind of an idiot. He's kind of an airhead. He's out there singing, playing music with the sheep. Yeah. yeah. And God said, I got a I got a king over there. Mm -hmm. Already seen it. No. So he sends his word. In the person of Samuel. And the word comes. Mm -hmm. And he anoints David. Mm -hmm. King. Mm -hmm. David wasn't thinking about being a king. It just, the word came to him. Mm -hmm. And told him, you're the king. Yeah. Now here's what's weird. He was still just hurting sheep. Yeah. He, he, he was in a, a season. He was in a moment. He was in a... a a destiny position. So how does God do it? Saul, the king, who actually is a kind of a nasty guy, mm -hmm. egotist, arrogant. He was really humble when he got it. Once he got it, he did a complete 360 and became a real jerk. So what does he do? David's not, he's he's the king, but he's not the king. Mm -hmm. Right? So what, what does Saul do? Saul says, I'm tormented. These demons, I, I, I'm just tormented all the time. I get headaches. I, I, I'm confused. I'm, I'm aggravated. Nuts. And somebody said, well, hey, there's a little shepherd boy that really plays the, the harp. I mean, that kid can play the harp. And it has, it has a, a way of just relaxing. Saul tells them, bring David to the palace. Oh, Lord Jesus, praise the Lord. Mm. He's heard his sheep, and Saul has him brought to the palace. Saul didn't bring him to the palace. God brought him yeah. to the palace. Yes. To what? To experience the palace. Uh -huh. The palace that David is playing music in, he actually owns. Yeah. Nobody knows this. The David and God. Yeah. Wow. See, God is telling you you are royalty. Yes. He's telling you you lay hands on the sick and they recover. Yes. He's telling you nothing shall be impossible to you. Right. Why? Because that is your destiny. He's trying to resonate with what is already in you. He's trying to get your mind renewed to who you really are. He's, he's giving you glimpses, pictures of your true identity, yes. of who you are in Christ. You gotta go. You gotta believe. You gotta be willing to trust. 
God's trying to expose you to your true identity. He's trying to expose you to your destiny. That's what this is for. It's not about making you a better person. A better person will just be the result. What he's trying to do is get you to your season. To your destiny. To your appointed time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are a king. You are a priest. The word of God is your reality. The word of God is your destiny. The word of God is the truth. Yes. It's your place. Yes. yes. Mm. Praise God. Ruth chapter 4, mm. 13 to 22. Praise the Lord. Mm. Ruth 4, 13 through 22. Mm. So Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. Come fruitful if you get the place you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thine old age, to thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee. Speaking to Naomi, which is better to thee than seven sons, that born him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, actually a grandson, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the generations of Pharaohs. Pharaohs begot Hezron, Hezron begot Ram, Ram begot Abinadab, Abinadab begot Nashon, Nashon begot Solomon. Solomon begot Boaz, Boaz begot Obed, Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. And David is the ancestor of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Through this Moabite, through this yes. outcast yes. who was willing to believe that yes. God had something better for her. Yes. God uses her to bring about, through her redemption, mm -hmm. to bring about the redemption of mankind. Uh -huh. Boaz is a type of Christ. Naomi represents all of us. We need a redeemer. Yes. We need somebody to redeem us. But it has to be a kinsman. So God couldn't just reach down from heaven and redeem us. He had to be a kinsman. He had to become a man. Uh -huh. mm. yeah. So that He could redeem us back to everything yes. that is rightfully ours. Yes. That the enemy has stolen. Right. Properties, finances, health, relationships. So this isn't just about this isn't just about getting enough to eat. No. This is way more than that. This is our identity. Yes. This is our destiny. This is God's purpose. Praise the Lord. Because out of your belly will flow rivers. Of living water, yes. healing, wholeness, yes. health, mm -hmm. prosperity. Your birth, yes. the miracles of God. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4, 22 through 24. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Jane, you put off the. Cut off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Praise the Lord. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind so that you can put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness yes. and true holiness. Yes. Now, the new man is the nature of God. Yes. It's the fullness of God. Yes. Walk in the newness of life. Paul talks about this over and over. The new man, the new man, the new man. And what's Paul saying? He's talking, simply he's speaking of the Lord Himself. Mm -hmm. The new man is you and Christ are one. Yes. yes. You've been redeemed. Yes. He's your near kinsman. Yes. We are the bride of Christ. Yes. 
The fields belong to us. Look out on the fields. They're white and ready to harvest. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now, I know that's talking about revival, but it's also talking about all yes. of your stuff. Yes. Praise the Lord. Everything that God has redeemed for you that the enemy took with Adam. Yes. Which was everything. All things are yours except the one tree. Yes. Yes. You have dominion. You have authority. Yes. Power. Yes. If you could just get to the cancer. If you could just get to your Redeemer. He'll show you favor. He'll give you grace. And all that has been robbed, all that has been stolen, will be restored. Put on the new name. Praise the Lord. Alright, I'm about to wrap the last verse. Ruth chapter 1, verse 22 again. So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter, all with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. Of the barley harvest, the Passover, death, unleavened bread, burial. First fruits, resurrection. Peace of the Lord. See, in Christ, beggars become inheritors. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. The nobodies mm -hmm. become the somebodies. Mm -hmm. The nothings end up with Yes. Praise the Lord. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's there to teach you your true identity, your inheritance, your place in God, your destiny. Imagine that. Yes. Think about it. Imagine that. And see how God moves you into that knowing, into that divine appointment. Because there's one for all of us. Yeah. And I don't care how old I am when I get there, I just want to get there before I leave here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lord. I want to experience all that God has purchased for me. Yes. I want to lay down at His feet and hear Him say, you're mine. And all yes. of this is yours. Yes. Praise the Lord. He's, he's speaking that to each and every one of us. Yeah. Your heart of hearts, you've had dreams, you've had visions, you've had desires, you've thought, this is too much. It's, I, I can't believe this for me because look at my life, look at my situation, look at my circumstances. Mm -hmm. Look at him. Yeah. Look at, at this. Yeah. Just go through this yeah. and get to where he is. Yes. Yes. And all things will be yours. Yes. And nothing Jesus. shall be withheld. Praise the Lord. Yes. We better do this, church. Yes. This yes. word has got to be more than just a religious text. Yes. Yes. A way of beating each other up yes. and feeling guilty and ashamed. Yes. It has to be the thing that releases us into the kingdom of God. Yes. So that we can experience everything that our Redeemer purchased for us. Yes. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand, God. Praise God. Yes. Imagine. Yeah. Praise God. Just imagine that. Yes. See what happens. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate you all being here. Appreciate your, parent, uh, your, your uh, patience as I struggle to get through this. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless all of you. Go in the power of His might yes. and use your imagination yes. to make God real to Amen. everyone around us. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Lord bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Yeah, I'm not